Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times The Simpsons angered people. Wait, 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 wait. Who is before the cat? Now, are there any questions? Keeping in mind that I already explained about my hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And you must be the man who didn't know if he had a pimple or a boil. It was a gummy bear. For this list, we'll be looking at celebrities, organizations, and even governments that had a bone to pick with America's favorite non prehistoric cartoon family. Do you think any of these reactions were justified? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Seth MacFarlane. What's going on here? Ah, get off my wife! Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane has the deepest respect for The Simpsons and Matt Groening. After all, the Griffins probably wouldn't exist without them. However, MacFarlane expressed frustration when Fox cut a gag in a season six Family Guy episode where Quagmire and Marge Simpson, um, Giggity. I get a call from the network saying, you can't do this. You cannot do this gag. And with, with The Simpsons, and I said, why not? They've, they've made fun of Family Guy like five times. Quagmire subsequently shoots Marge and the rest of The Simpsons. The scene eventually surfaced in reruns and DVD. In a commentary, McFarlane criticized the network for removing the joke when The Simpsons had taken numerous shots at Family Guy. Fox apparently wanted to end the quote-unquote feud between the two cartoons, which McFarlane says isn't even real. McFarlane suspects that Fox was afraid of James L. Brooks' reaction, leaving this episode's first act without a joke to conclude on. The reason I still maintain is that, uh, and I said this to them, you're, you're afraid of James L. Brooks, who runs The Simpsons. You're afraid of James L. Brooks, and you're not afraid of us. And that's why we can't do it. Number nine, the National Hockey League. Hitting a new low in Season 9, Krusty the Clown finds himself at the bottom of a bottle, a glass slipper, and the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Krusty seemingly reaches his limit after taking a huge swing, spewing into hockey's most treasured prize. According to Mike Scully, the crew received some, quote, kind of a cease and desist letter from the NHL in response. Taking the advice of a, quote, cool Fox lawyer, Scully and the company decided to ignore the letter. Sort of. The Stanley Cup would resurface in the background the following season after Homer and Ned go on a crazy bender in Vegas. Oh my goodness, Homer. Ugh. Wake up. Whether or not this is an intentional callback to Krusty's bender, the Stanley Cup has seen its fair share of vomit. Here comes that vomit again. <laughs> Number 8. Hari Kondabolu. For decades, Apu Nahasa P. Mapetalan was among Springfield's most popular residents. In recent years, though, the character has divided audience with some believing that he's had a negative impact on Indians and South Asians. What do I do now? I've been drummed out of my profession. I'm a disgrace. Even this babbling brook sounds almost like mocking laughter. This debate arguably started to gain traction with comedian Hari Kondabolu and his 2017 documentary, The Problem with the Pooh. Speaking with people of Indian and South Asian descent, Kondabolu found that he wasn't the only one who views a Pooh as a problematic stereotype. I hate Apu. I hate Apu. And, and because of that, I dislike The Simpsons. The whole series. Yeah. I love The Simpsons because... You hate yourself. The Simpsons addressed the controversy in season 29, albeit briefly sparking more heated discussions. Something that started decades ago and was applauded and inoffensive is now politically incorrect. What can you do? While the conversation continues, Hank Azaria officially stepped away from voicing Apu in 2020 and made an apology the following year. The future remains unclear for the Quickie Mart proprietor, but Kondabolu's criticisms were definitely heard. Number 7. Frank Severo Frank Severo isn't a household name, but you might remember this Italian-American character actor from such films as The Godfather Part Two, New York, New York, and The Wedding Singer. You might even notice a certain resemblance between Severo's Goodfellas character, Frank Carbone, and Springfield mob enforcer, Louie. Six queens, freedom and weak. At least Severo did, leading to a $250 million lawsuit. In 2014, Severo accused The Simpsons of copying his character as some of the writers apparently lived next door to him while Goodfellas was being developed. 
The judge threw the case out the following year, finding that Louis satirized mob characters in general. Ironically, Dan Castellaneta claims that he drew inspiration for Louis' voice from Severo's Goodfellas co-star Joe Pesci. Isn't that funny? Funny how? I mean, what's funny about it? <laughs> Number 6. Morrissey In many cases, celebs take it in stride when they're mocked or parodied on The Simpsons. This wasn't at all the case with English singer Morrissey. In a season 32 episode, Benedict Cumberbatch voiced Quillaby, who is modeled after Morrissey. Keep in mind I'm merely a product of your fractured psyche. Oh, shut up. Don't ruin it. Lisa builds up a version of Quillaby in her mind, but she finds that the actual singer is nothing like she imagined. Quillaby turns out to be prejudiced, overweight, and strapped for cash because he sued so many people for criticizing him. I'm only here because I lost my fortune suing people for saying things about me that were completely true. <laughs> things kind of came full circle as Morrissey responded, quote, The hatred shown towards me from the creators of The Simpsons is obviously a taunting lawsuit, but one that requires more funding than I could possibly muster in order to make a challenge. Is this what I turned into? I'm greedy, I'm hateful, and my face looks like a syphilitic moon. Number 5. Brazil. From New Orleans to Australia, The Simpsons has ignited controversy around the world. I'm gonna report this to me member of parliament. Hey, Gus! I got something to report to you. That's a bloody outrage it is. I wanna take this all the way to the Prime Minister. In one of the most infamous cases, Fox nearly faced legal action for the show's send-up of Brazil. In a season 13 episode, the South American country is portrayed to be overrun with crime, stereotypes, and colorful rats. Mom, these are slums. The government just painted them bright colors so the tourists wouldn't be offended. Works for me. Yeah, check out the rats. Ooh, they look like Skittles. The Rio de Janeiro tourist board wasn't at all pleased, although their supposed plans to sue Fox likely would have held up in court. Nevertheless, James L. Brooks issued an apology to Rio and its people, calling them, quote, lovely. Well, I'd like to return to Brazil, but I hear the monkey problem is even worse now. Being part of the Simpsons crew, though, Brooks jokingly added, quote, if that doesn't settle the issue, Homer Simpson offers to take on the president of Brazil on Fox's celebrity boxing. Number four, Tracy Ullman. Before they were the biggest names in primetime animation, The Simpsons got their start in short form on The Tracy Ullman Show. In season two, Ullman lent her voice to dog trainer Emily Winthrop and the family's neighbor, Sylvia Winfield. There's only one family on this block, no, on Earth, inconsiderate enough to let a monster like that roam free. Oh. <laughs> the following year, however, Ullman took out a lawsuit against Fox. While Ullman did receive $58,000 in royalties for the cartoon, the comedian believed that she deserved a bigger cut of the revenue, $2.5 million to be precise. As Ullman put it, I breastfed the yellow people. Ullman might have given the Simpsons their start, but the court ultimately sided with the network. Nevertheless, Ullman has spoken fondly of The Simpsons since then, even appearing on the 20th anniversary special. But I think it's been the most successful spin-off ever. Number three. Fox News. The Simpsons has never shied away from making fun of the Fox network, but that's nothing compared to the times they've thrown shade at Fox News. A season 14 episode took several shots at the right-leaning network through a news crawl. Tonight, we'll be interviewing the top two candidates for Springfield's 24th Congressional District. For the Republicans, beloved children's entertainer, Krusty the Clown. And for the Democrats, this guy. I have a name. Among the headlines are pointless news crawls up 37% and JFK posthumously joins Republican Party. Although Fox claims otherwise, Greening says that the network threatened legal action. Figuring that Fox wouldn't sue itself, The Simpsons got away with the joke. This is Fox News with the latest liberal outrage. It seems liberals want to give NASA the right to abort space missions whenever they feel like it. However, Fox told the show not to use any more fake news tickers, fearing that they may be confused for real ones. That didn't stop The Simpsons from cracking more Fox News jokes, attracting outrage from Bill O'Reilly in 2010. Ah, we're unbalanced! It's not fair! Number 2. George H.W. Bush <laughs> Thank you.
The Simpsons got off to a rocky start with the first lady, Barbara Bush, who called the show. It was the dumbest thing I had ever seen. Mrs. Bush had a change of tune after receiving a thoughtful letter from Marge Simpsons. Well, technically, the Simpsons writers. I thought perhaps it would be a good start to just speak my mind with great respect Marge Simpson. President Bush apparently wasn't so easily won over, bowing to To make American families a lot more like the Waltons and a lot less like the Simpsons. The show promptly responded with a jab at Bush's role in the early 1990s recession. But it didn't end there. When the Bushes moved across the street from the Simpsons, a brawl between George and Homer was inevitable. I'll take your head and Barbara <laughs> Chop. What are you doing here? It also paved the way for multiple jokes about his one-term presidency. Since I'd achieved all my goals as president in one term, there was no need for a second. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Matt Groening. Quite a twist, huh? Bet you didn't see that one coming. Despite being the show's creator, Groening hasn't been satisfied with every creative decision. Along with Harry Shearer, Groening criticized the Notorious Principal and the Pauper episode. That man is the real Seymour Skinner. <laughs> Groening was especially critical about a crossover with another James L. Brooks produced animated series. Created by Simpsons writers Al Jean and Mike Reese, the critic had a short run. It's perhaps best remembered for a Simpsons episode where Jay Sherman came to Springfield. Hey man, I really love your show. I think all kids should watch it. <laughs> I suddenly feel so dirty. Groening thought the episode was a blatant advertisement for the critic. When he failed to get the crossover pulled, Groening had his name removed from the credits. Groening has seemingly mellowed out about crossovers since then, as The Simpsons have now clashed with Family Guy, Futurama, The X-Files, 24, Lego, Star Wars, and the Marvel Universe. Oh, the boy says you're magic. Can you turn one pork chop into two? I worship you, great Loki! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.